My name's Shannon, I am part of the customer care team and I'm also the end of life care and rehoming coordinator. My name's Kezia, I work as a community engagement assistant and an end of life care and rehoming coordinator at the Ralph. It's a veterinary referral centre, um, which means patients are referred to us from primary care practices. Because we're a specialist hospital, it means that by the time patients come to us, they're, they're often critically ill. Both of us work here alongside Dignity as part of the end of life care team um, for both patients and their families. I didn't know about Dignity until I started working at the Ralph and I got involved in end of life care because of how ethically and compassionately the patients are treated even after they've passed away. And Dignity really enables that to continue after the patients have left the Ralph. I haven't had to use Dignity personally, but I have rehomed Fred um, from the Ralph Referral Centre when he was eight weeks old. He was brought to us as a referral to our cardiologist and he was already in congestive heart failure with a heart condition that unfortunately there isn't a cure for. So we essentially took him home, not really knowing how much time we would have with him. I've never known a dog to basically just love life so much. He is a super, super happy boy. It's very, very obvious when he's not feeling well um, because he'll go from just being incredibly enthusiastic. So I had really known at that point after working um, with Dignity at the Ralph over the last couple of years that that would be my choice. I also really liked having the option to be with Fred right up until the last steps. So knowing that I could go, you know, that entire journey with him right up until the last moment was really comforting and really important to me. And also just the amount of options that Dignity offer in terms of um, aftercare wishes and keepsakes. Having such varied options and knowing that I could choose something that was going to be really meaningful as well and not having such a limited choice and having to just kind of make do with my decisions. Luckily, he's 18 months old. <laughs> he's defying all of the odds at the moment in terms of his health. After a patient dies, part of mine and Shannon's role is to speak with carers about their aftercare wishes. And it's so nice within those conversations to be able to speak with such trust and confidence about dignity. If the carer chooses dignity, then we call dignity. They pick up so quickly, we request collection of the pet and they usually come the same day to collect them. And dignity never fail to give us a call to let us know that they've received that request, so no information is lost. Pet carers may not know about all the team members who are behind the scenes, but from a practice perspective, the phone teams, the driving teams, they're just all so lovely to interact with. And again, I have a genuine trust and confidence that when I make that call or when I meet with a driver, that team member cares just as much about that patient as I do. The main part of the end of life care process of dignities that aligns with us as a hospital is the fact that the ethical and compassionate treatment of the animals doesn't stop when they pass away. From careful handling to gentle cold storage rather than freezing, to resting them in a bed rather than in a bag, it's just all these little details that make such a difference and it all really is about treating them with dignity. When talking about my role, people often say, oh that must be really hard, but actually for me, knowing that places like dignity exist and knowing that animals are getting the treatment that they deserve because we love them so much. It's, it's really like an important thing to me. It's the littlest things that make the biggest difference and that's how I'd summarise dignity. Lots of little thoughtful things that come together to make a big difference to, to the patients and to the families who miss them.